This week we are learning about fish and so we are going to uh, work through a perch dissection this week. So we've taken our specimens out. Uh, the species is per uh, Perca flavensis um, and we've got our perch kind of oriented on our dissecting tray uh, so that we can start to point out some of the external anatomy. So we've got pretty clearly here the mouth, the mandible is the lower jaw, the maxilla is the upper jaw, we have a nostril, we have our eye, we have what's called our operculum, which is where the gills open. We have our pelvic fin, which is kind of displaced a little bit by uh, where they've done the dyeing on the intestines. We have our pectoral fin. We have our anterior dorsal fin, which is the one closest to the front. We've got our posterior dorsal fin closer to the back. We have what's called the anal fin, which is right behind the anus itself. And then we've got our caudal fin, which is our tail fin. Art by looking inside the mouth. And so Ava is going to open up the purchase mouth um, and kind of show the action of the jaws. You're probably gonna have to use your fingers, Ava. Um, and we're going to be able to look closely at the fish's teeth. So here we've got, we can pull down on the mandible. Let's see if I can get that in focus. Ah, the camera does not want you to see the fish's teeth. But uh, if you had a specimen yourself, you'd be able to notice uh, the presence of the teeth in there. All right, so our next step is to remove the operculum, which is the covering here that was on the side of the gills. Okay, this has some pretty solid structure to it. Like it, it took some, not quite bone breaking, but you know, it was really, took some effort to cut through there. So um, we've traded specimens here really quick. We've, uh, we've borrowed Eric's perch um, because it gives you a really, really good picture here of the gill structure. So if you look at the gill, uh, Ava, grab the probe. Um, if you look at the gill, you notice there is here this kind of round area. This is called the gill raker. And then you've got the filaments of the gills themselves. And so the filaments are where the vessels are that allow the fish to um, to filter the oxygen out of the water. Our first step in getting into the internal structures of the fish is to remove the skin. So you can see we've done that here, right? This is actually really, really hard to cut through. Those scales that protect the fish are incredibly strong. You can see we've kind of littered our tray with scales. Uh, they stick to your skin as well. It's kind of like glitter. Uh, so we'll discard that skin and just take a moment to appreciate the muscles here of the fish. These are the muscles that um, obviously allow the fish to swim. This is also the part of the fish that um, we eat if, we're, uh, if we consume fish. All right, so we've wrestled with getting our fish open. Actually, Eric passed me one of those gill arches that I pulled out. A nicer looking one, please. That one's perfect. So one of the things that we've done is we've removed the gill arches. So here, I'll put this here and come in a little close. So with this, you can now very clearly see the difference between these gill rakers, which are present on this surface, and the gill filaments, which kind of sweep around on the outside. Uh, so this, these fish have four to five gill arches. We took out four, um, but we may have manhandled one uh, in the process of skinning the fish. Um, so now we're gonna look at our internal anatomy, okay? This dark area here is our heart. Okay, the reason this fish has all these red things on it isn't because that's blood. The, this is a dye that was injected in this specimen to help show 
the vasculature to help show the blood vessels. Um, so the reason it's red is because that's where all of these vessels would be. Um, it's kind of hard to cut the fish open and really be able to like isolate and see those vessels. All right, so we have then the stomach of the fish. We have this lobed structure right here. This is our liver, okay, and our liver kind of uh, it borders the stomach. Of course, it secretes uh, bile that's able to help digest food. It also helps to process the uh, toxins. So we can see a little more of this, the stomach there. All of this represents intestines. So we've got our small intestine. We've got our large intestine um, that then comes down to the actual anus. Come on, focus. The anus is here. This is where the fish would poop. You see this white kind of lighter sac. This is what is called the swim bladder. Uh, this is what helps a fish kind of keep its buoyancy. And so the fish can fill or uh, take out uh, water from that swim bladder um, and be able to like float up higher or float down lower. And then let's see if we can get in here and see the aorta. Sorry, this is kind of a hard angle to get. Ava, take the camera too. And let me see if I can get in here and show us where that aorta was. <laughs> this fish doesn't want to cooperate. Do you see the aorta now, Ava? There's a dark, thick vessel back there between where I'm holding the swim bladder and where my finger is holding back um, the stomach and intestines. Um, and that is the aorta. So fish have a circulatory system uh, that's known as a closed circulatory system. Um, what that means is that you've got vessels and um, actual membranes around uh, the um the heart itself um and so the blood will leave the heart where and then go to the gills uh, the capillaries in the gills help to put the oxygen into the blood and then the heart continues to pump that blood to the other areas um, in the body all right so much of the fish abdominal cavity is taken up by its digestive organs we have now completely uh gutted this fish being nice um, biology people that we are. Um, but we did this so that we would be able to see the gonads. So this fish happens to be a male. And what you have here is one testis um, with the associated uh, vas deferens and seminal vesicles that would transport the sperm out of the fish. So fish spawn, what that means is there's no actual sexual intercourse. Um, instead, when females are ready to breed, if this had been a female, we would have noticed um, a slew of eggs inside of her. I mean, it would have been, the gonad would have been much larger and full of eggs. Um, so when females are ready to mate, they find a suitable nesting site, not really to nest like we think of birds nesting, but a site that's going to be relatively safe for their uh, babies to be able to hatch out of eggs uh, and be in their little kind of larval form. Um, and so uh, females then um, spawn their eggs. That's where they uh, kind of force the eggs muscularly to leave their bodies. And then males come along and release their sperm in the same area. And so it's kind of a game of chance, uh, aided by, of course, the fact that you're in an aquatic environment that allows the sperm and eggs to meet. So in that digestive system, we've seen the liver, the gallbladder, the esophagus, the stomach, uh, the intestine, um, and then in this, um, with the, the digestive system taken out, uh, we've, we've been able to isolate this reproductive system. Um, the other things to, uh, that are, are uh, important to note, the swim bladder is part of the respiratory system, so we have gills and then swim bladder. Um, we would also be able to isolate the kidneys and the urinary bladder, but we've kind of, uh, let's see, the urinary bladder is this right here. We've got dark masses that are on that 
uh, we've got dark masses that are on that that represent the kidneys. So fish have a distinct excretory system. It's not just the anus passing poop out. Um, we've got kidneys and bladder as well. So we've had a closed circulatory system with um, one enlarged artery um, and one enlarged vein. We have a heart that has two chambers, one atrium and one ventricle. We have a full digestive system with two openings, mouth and anus, unlike the roundworms. Um, and we've got this reproductive system with this particular fish being male. Are you on? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we have manhandled this fish a little bit more. Just to, uh, first of all, just for tips, um, when you go into the eye, um, you end up finding this, which is the actual like lens part of the eye. The rest of the eye is this gross kind of uh, jelly-like fluid. Okay. Uh, and then what we really want to point out here is the brain and the spinal cord. So that's what this is that I've inadvertently severed here. If we could get enough of the tissue away, we would also see the bones of the ear. Fish are perfectly capable of hearing. Um, I did not do that successfully with this specimen, but here we have our brain um, encased in bone to keep it safe and our spinal cord. Are we on? Okay, so now we've got our other specimen, the one that Ava started with, uh, that then Eric got by default. And one thing we want to show here is that this specimen is a female. So this is the large like ovary and uterus. We've got like two horns of it because we've got uh, a right ovary and a left ovary. And so for this particular specimen, um, these are the gonads. So of course fish can lay upwards of several hundred to uh, to a thousand or more eggs at a time.